In this video, I'd like to look at an array of objects using JSON um, to provide me that array of objects. And then I want to be able to sort the array of objects based on different properties of those objects. The uh, code for this page can be found at the URL seen here. Okay, so here's the uh, page. It has information. The objects in question are going to be about um, Cohen Brothers movies. Um, so I have uh, some JSON just sort of pasted into my file uh, with that information in a JSON format. And right now they are assorted by the title. Um, and then I did a little work, which we'll see, to uh, do it so do an old-fashioned sorting based on titles where you don't include the word of the or a uh, or an as part of the title. So the Big Lebowski is between Bart and Fink and Blood Simple rather than way down with T's. So um, the sort of more old, old-fashioned um, sorting. So I will show you how I did that. Um, and uh, I can short, sort by the year. So here's the earliest uh, movie, Blood Simple. I can uh, sort by the runtime. Here's the shortest movie, Raising Arizona. And so that's what I want to show you, the, the JSON and the sorting. OK. And I'm also making this table dynamically, so I'll show you that as well. OK. So here we go. And I have it all other. I have these images in the folder, but I didn't do anything with them. But I thought uh, since people might download it, might want to push this example further. I did uh, keep the images in the file, although they're not. I don't do anything with them in this particular page. OK, so here we go. Let me now close my explorer and see more of the code. All right. So I have a little bit of style. This is my red color, a little bit of padding. Here, I'm going to uh, dynamically add uh, tables and rows and cells. And so this is my styling uh, of a TD, of a table data item. And uh, it's going to have a white border, which I think we saw. There's that white border around the cells um, and a little bit of space. So everything's not jammed up against the side. So just a teeny bit of style. OK, so here's my select. Uh, it's got an ID of cell sort I'm connecting it to an event. So I'm not doing any fancy add event handlers, I'm keeping the, sort, the, the select pretty simple and straightforward. There were three options, uh, title, year, and runtime. I gave the value and the sort of text to be the same. Um, and here I have uh, an empty table but with an ID. OK. Here is the uh, JSON defining the array of movie objects. So I have a variable called movies. Remember in JavaScript, you can say var or let or not have anything. So I was a little bit sloppy here. This should probably see, say let movies equal. But um, JavaScript is forgiving about that. So in um, JavaScript, oops, pardon me. In JavaScript notation, the square bracket uh, refers to a list, sorry, an array. And so there's an overall uh, array. So there's just one set of square brackets. So this is all just one big array. And then uh, curly brackets uh, indicate an object. So this is an array of objects. And then those objects have properties like title, year, YouTube, poster. And those properties have values like blood simple, 1984, some YouTube code. And so then within the object, curly denoted by the curly brackets, 
we have key value pairs so and the key and the value are separated by a colon and then the key value pair is separated from other key value pairs by a comma uh, don't put a comma after the last key value pair and then between objects so there, here's an object and then here's another object between objects in the array i also have commas and then on the last one no comma of course comma means something more is coming and there's nothing more coming so that is all of my data in a json notation in a json format uh square brackets for the array curly brackets for the objects colons between the key and the value commas between the key value pairs and also commas between the objects okay so the drop down select called the function sort by. Here it is on change called sort by. And I am getting the value from the drop down list, and I just decided to do it as a switch. Now I might be able to do something fancy based on if these, if what's in my drop down select is matching the field names. In, in the in the JSON in the, the, the key, then I might be able to do something fancier than this, but I just decided to do it as a switch statement. So here is, I'm getting this thing I call the field and I have a switch and then I have three cases. I have a case for the title. I have a case for the runtime. I have a case for the year. And then I have default case, which should not come up, but uh, just to cover myself. Okay, so here is the the title sorting. Um, so I have an array movies. There's a built-in uh, method for uh, for arrays in JavaScript called sort, and then uh, we can create a, a. There'll be some, typically some default. Uh, if you're if you're sorting something simple like like strings, then there there will be a default understood a uh, compare function that will take every pair of elements and and compare them based on their the type they have so if you have strings they'll do a string comparison often it's a string comparison i shouldn't say it'll just figure out the types because it's been known to get it wrong um so it's usually defaulting to like a string sorting um but you can define what sort you want well i want to sort on different fields so I need to control that compare function. Um, so I'm using sort, and then I'm going to give sort my compare method. I'm using this sort of more fat arrow, more anonymous type of uh, function. So uh, I don't have the name of a function here, but I have its arguments. I'm gonna have two elements of the array, A and B and uh, i'm using a, a fat arrow style and then here is my code block and one can do this more succinctly but i've sort of uh, stretched it out to make it uh, a little easier to see and uh, a compare has to you want it to give something positive they usually use a one uh if the first thing is greater uh uh a minus one if it's less than and a zero if it's equal. So that's what we want out of a compare function. So I'm interested in the, the title. Um, and if I were doing an old fashioned, FR, sorry, not an old fashioned F, if I didn't care about the, if I, uh, if I, if I, let me show you uh, the year, for instance. So in the year, I'm just interested in sorting by the year. Uh, a dot year is greater than B dot year, I get a one. If A year is less than B year minus one, otherwise a zero. So that's the easy one here. And it doesn't matter with the year. All these, all the years are gonna be four digits. So it doesn't matter if it's treating it as a string or if it's treating it as a number, they're going to be sorted uh, correctly either way so it doesn't so i don't have to worry about is the is the year sort is the year compare uh 
treating it as a number or a string, it doesn't matter. It's going to give me the same answer. So that's the sort of simple one year. Um, in the title, there are strings, so it could have been simple, but I decided to do this, you know, I'm old, so back in the day when you were sorting uh, things like, you know, book titles or what have you, you did not uh, use the word, the, the leading article, the or a uh, or an uh, in your, in your, in your sorting, in your, in your alphabetizing. So I am def I'm taking the title, a title, and uh, I am using a regular expression uh, version of replace. And so the regular expression is uh, between this uh, uh, sl slash here. And in a regular expression, the, the caret means begins with. And I'm looking for a pattern. If it begins with the or a uh, or an in a space. So if there's the in a space, like if it were there or then, we wouldn't eliminate it. It's only the, the it's only the articles that we are getting rid of. Um, so the caret means then it occurs at the beginning. I don't want to get rid of a the somewhere in the middle of, of the title. But if a the appears at the beginning, that's what the caret gives me at the beginning. Uh, so the in a space, I want to replace it with nothing. The vertical bar within a regular expression uh, is is an or. So it's the, if it starts with the or a or an, so the caret is the beginning. The spaces, the, the, the letters in the space are their literal selves. Um, the vertical bar is an or and the slash delimits the entire regular expression. So again, if it starts with the, or a, or an, then replace it with nothing and do that for, for the two things I'm comparing. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be comparing two things, do it to both of them, and then compare that, that thing that where the replacement has taken place. Um, and then there was the runtime. And the runtime, some of the Cohen movies are, are under 100 minutes. So their runtime is, is in the 90s and uh, other movies are over 100 minutes. And I didn't want to take uh, the chance that, the, that it would sort it uh, as a string. If it sorted it as a string, then a time of 105 would be uh, less than uh, 95. Um, so I wanted it treated as a number. So I included that in my uh, compare function here. So I have A and B coming in, the two things I want to compare. And I don't want to just blindly compare the runtimes, but I want to specify that I'm going to treat them as numbers and compare them as numbers. Okay, so that was my three uh, compare methods for the purposes of sorting. So I am uh, sorting. So I figure out how I want to sort it, then I'm sorting it and giving the compare function for that particular kind of sort. Uh, title, runtime, year. And uh, then when I've, after I have sorted, I am going to create my table. So the first thing I want to do is there might I might have previously created some table and I'm going to take, go to the page, get the element uh, with an ID of TB Cohen, which is my table. I'm gonna take its inner HTML to quote, quote. So if there was anything there before, get rid of it. Now I'm gonna loop through my movies, which are now sorted. And I'm going to create um, rows and cells uh, to, for my uh, table. And I could have my, my rows have only one cell, but I could have added more cells. That, that would not be difficult. Okay, so I'm using a for each to loop over the movies. Element is, uh, movies is an, is an array of objects. So then as I use a for each, then this argument is one of the objects, one of the Cohen uh, um, movie objects, Cohen brother movie objects. Okay. I'm creating uh, a TR element, a, a table row. 
And then I am creating a TD at table data element. And if I were doing a fancier um, table, then I might want uh, a header row. I'm not doing a header row. I might have a, a T head and a T body. I'm not doing that. So I'm keeping it uh, fairly simple here. Just rows and cells. And in fact, only a row has only one cell. Okay, so I create a row. I create a cell. I'm creating some text that is the title and the release year and the runtime. So that way I can compare and see if I've got the sorting I want. And I make, and that, that's me creating a text node. So I just, I'm creating some text and here's me creating another text node, which are the stars of the, those movies. And then I'm taking my cell, my table data uh, element, and I'm adding the first piece of information, which was the title and the re release, which was the year and the runtime. And then I'm adding a, and I'm appending that to my cell. And then I'm, so when you create a text node, it's just text. So you can't have like HTML elements, like a break in there, it won't recognize them. So I have to make it, uh, make the text and then append it and then append separately a, a break element and then uh, another append of the second piece of information. So I can't just concatenate in there a break. It's not going to recognize it because it's just making this create text node is just text and is not not going to recognize any HTML. Okay. So that was that okay um so i created a row and a cell i created some information i've added the information to the cell now i'm adding the cell to the row and then i'm adding the row to the table and then i'm in a loop so i've added uh done that many times for each movie and uh this is uh me when the page starts up. So this is not in any function. So it happens sort of as basically as soon as the page loads and you've evaluated anything that was not in a function above. So I've gotten the, this was uh, the, this establishing of the data was not in a function, but the, all the sort by was in a function. So the, the sort by weights, but this goes ahead and happens. And so the sort is defined, but hasn't happened. But then I'm forcing it to happen by creating a change event and forcing the select sort to have that change event. So it's like the, like the user chose, and it comes up as, as title. Title was my first option. So it will come up as though the user has just chosen title in the dropdown select and called this function. So uh, when it starts up, uh, it's as if we have just chosen title in the dropdown. And here is all the information. There, and this is first comes up as the title formatting. And as we say, so it's, uh, Barton Fink, and then we did that little work with the regular expression to not use the word the in the sorting. So the next thing is big and then blood. Um, and we go by years. That was the easy one, 84, 85. Since the, all the years were four digits, it wouldn't matter whether they were string sorted or number sorted. But the run times, it would matter because here, is uh, the first four movies are under 100 minutes, and then the other ones are over. And, and we don't want them thinking that uh, 107 is less than 99. Uh, it's, it would be if it's treated as strings, it wouldn't be if they're treated as numbers. So I wanna make sure it was forced as numbers. So that's why I had that parse int in there. Okay, that's what I wanted to show you. A bit more JSON and sorting and creating a table. So those are all the features of this. Thank you.